Hi everyone, it's Julie from Whippy Chick here. And today we're gonna to do something kind of fun and silly. I've uh, seen this done once before on, a, on another YouTube channel. Um, Anya from, from Ophelia Talks did this and I loved it. I was hoping she'd do more. Um, and she says she will, so hopefully we'll look forward to that. But um, what we're gonna to do today is we're going to look at a chart. A lot of people uh, see these charts and they think, what the heck is going on? But it's really pretty simple once you know what each of the symbols mean. There are lots of um, keys all over uh, Pinterest and YouTube, all over the internet. If you just you know um, Google it, you will certainly be able to find how to read a crochet chart. So I did put in, um, let me back this up a little bit. Oops. I did put in a few uh, things on the side here so you can kind of tell what each of the symbols mean. So these little circles are a chain. This T with a little line through that indicates a double crochet. Um, just a regular T is a half double crochet. So when you've got four of them together, it's a four and a half double crochet cluster. Um, there are Actually, on the chart, there are five. I only drew four, um, but these are four double crochet or five double crochets together. They make a cluster. And then these are three double crochets that make a cluster. So um, we're going to start from step one. We're going to start from the beginning um, and we're going to see if we can make this. Now, on the back side of this paper, whoo, a tease is a picture of what this is going to look like now I'm trying very hard not to look at that picture because I'd like to be able to make it just from the chart that's the fun of this uh, little experiment is to see if I can make mine look exactly like the ones on the other side different colors of course um, but to, to see if I'm able to do this so without further ado let's tighten this up a little bit the first thing we need to do is start at the beginning. And we've got these four chains and they're kind of hooked together. So that's going to mean we're gonna chain up four spaces and we're gonna connect them with a slip stitch to create a ring. So here goes. Okay, step one was pretty easy. I probably didn't need to do that with a time lapse, <laughs> but I did. Um, so we're going to go to our second round. Let me set that down and take a look at our chart. Now the second round, and I've already counted these, but you would count how many you have, how many stitches that go around and how many chains. So I counted them up and there are 16 double crochets going into that ring that we just made. And in between each one of those 16 double crochets is a chain one space. Okay, so our first double crochet, we're gonna chain up three, and that's going to create our first double crochet. Um, you've probably seen that in lots of different patterns um, for crochet. So we're gonna chain up three and do an extra chain for the chain one space. And then we're gonna work 15 more double crochets and chain ones into the ring. Okay, let's speed it up so you don't have to watch me fumble. <laughs> okay, so I've just finished my 16th double crochet into the ring. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to join it with a slip stitch to the top of that initial stitch. And then I'm going to actually pull through and clip my yarn because I want to change colors. I think the most fun thing about, <coughs> excuse me, any granny square, any motif is the, the color changing. It just makes it so much fun. So there we go. Now we'll take a look at our chart and see what we have to do next. All right, so we have done our 
little ring here and we've just done this row which was the double crochets 16 double crochets with 16 chains in between now because we are building into those chain one spaces we know that we're going to do 16 of the next I could count them but I already have <laughs> So um, the next thing that we are going to do is the four half double crochet cluster. So we're going to do four half double crochets into each chain space. Now that's not all. In between each one of those clusters, we need to have another chain space. And that's so that in the next round, we have something to build into. So we're working on this round now. So it's going to be 16 half double crochet clusters into each chain space with a chain in between. Okay, let's see what color should I pick? I think we'll go with orange. Voila, I'll see you soon. Okay, so we're going to do um, a half double crochet cluster. So I actually had to look it up because I couldn't remember how to do it. Um, but it's a lot like a puff stitch and I'll just demonstrate it once and then I'll speed it up because this is going to take a while. You really want to pull all those loops up high so that you can pull that last one through. Okay, so I get to do that 15 more times with a chain one in between each. There's my chain one. And I'm gonna get started on the other 15. I'll see you soon. We're gonna speed things up a bit. Okay, so I have completed that round. I just need to do one more single crochet stitch and then I'm going to join it with a slip stitch to complete the circle. I'm gonna pull my yarn through and snip it so that I can change colors. It's a little bit wavy, but that is okay. Um, whenever you put a lot of stitches into a small space, um, you're stretching out those fibers. And after some time, and maybe some blocking, they'll, they'll get where they lay flat. So I think I'm going to change colors for the next round. I think I'll go with a teal blue. Before that, let's take a look at our pattern. <laughs> See what we have to do next. Oh my goodness, I almost, I almost knocked over my drink. <laughs> okay, so we have completed this round and this round and this round. Our next stitch is the five double crochet cluster, um, which is similar to the four half double crochet cluster, only it's a bigger puffier stitch. <laughs> so it should be very interesting to try to fit those big stitches into just one little chain, one space, but we're gonna give it a try. Um, we're going to do a round of 16, just like we did in the previous ones. Um, but this time we are going to do two single crochets, or I'm sorry, two chains, two chains in between each cluster. So without further ado, we'll get started on that. Okay, so I've just joined on with um, this teal blue. And I am going to chain up three to start this cluster stitch because it is a double crochet stitch. So I need to give my stitches some height. I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit there. Okay, and I'm just gonna demonstrate uh, in case this is a new stitch for you. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, pull up a loop, pull through just once. We're not gonna complete our double crochet stitch yet. And do that again, pull through, just pull through two 
So we've got three loops on our hook. Here comes the fourth one. And here comes the fifth one. And we're going to pull through all of those loops on our hook. Okay, we're going to chain two. And start with the next one. And again, there are going to be 16 of these. So I will just do this one more. And then I'm going to speed things up and meet you at the end of the round. Whoops. Okay, so once again, we made it all the way around. Boy, it's getting to be a longer and longer slog, it seems like. And I'm just gonna just trim my um, yarn here and pull that through because I do wanna change colors again as we go around our last round. So let's take a look at what that last round is going to look like. It looks like we come to the point now where we're turning into a square. Everything so far has been circular, but it looks like we've got some definite corners here. And that looks like a traditional granny, actually. And I have never done this before. This is my very first time turning a circle into a square. I've never even watched a tutorial on it. So that's the experiment though. That is to see, you know, can I follow this chart? Um, on my own to figure out what it was that the person was trying to convey. So without further ado, I will change my color and I'm going to just go for it. It looks like we've got um, in each of these chain two spaces, we're going to put clusters of double crochets. And it looks like we will do three clusters and then in the fourth one, we'll have three clusters, two chains, three clusters, all into that fourth one. And then we'll do three more clusters. And then we're gonna start another corner in that next space. So I'm gonna have to really pay attention to this round. Um, hopefully I can get through it without any um, mishaps. So I will um, get started on that and I'll see you at the end of the round. Okay, after thinking about it for a minute or two, I think I'm going to make this first space that I go into a corner. And I wouldn't normally clip my yarn this short. I would normally keep a nice long tail so that I could weave in my ends. But because this is just for tutorial purposes and I'm not planning to use this for anything, I'm just going to clip that short just so it stays out of my way. And it'll also kind of be a marker for my first corner. So, I'm going to go in in this space here and I'm going to make this my first corner space. So I'm going to attach my yarn and I'm going to chain up three. One, two, three. And I'm going to put a double crochet just like a traditional granny corner and a double crochet and then just like on the chart, I'm going to chain two. Hopefully you can see that it is a very light yellow. Okay, so we're gonna do the chain two spot and then we're gonna do three double crochets right back into that space. One. Two. <laughs> I'm gonna try to go over this blue piece of yarn, but I don't know how well that's going to work. <laughs> and three. 
Okay, so you can see I definitely have a corner there. So there's there. So now we're gonna, in the next three chain two spaces, we're gonna put three double crochets. It doesn't look like there's a chain in between, so I won't chain in between them. Here's one. Here's two. And here's three. I am going to try to chain or try to crochet a little looser than I normally do. I tend to crochet kind of tight. My stitches are kind of tight, but I want this to lay as flat as possible. So I'm going to try to loosen up my gauge a little bit. Okay, so there's my second cluster. And now my third. My dog is shedding and I keep finding little dog hairs in my yarn. <laughs> okay. So I've done my three, one, two, three, and now I'm back to another corner space. This is exciting, I've never done this before. Chain two, and three more in that space. and three. Hopefully this works. Okay, I'm going to speed up the camera a little bit here while I go around. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. I, I guess it's um, pretty square. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's not, there's a little bit of a roundedness to it. Um, this is my first try, so. <laughs> um, I think it's time now to flip my paper over and see if I came anywhere even close <laughs> to how this pattern was supposed to turn out. I think I did everything correctly. I, um, I think that it just would need to be blocked in order for it to be a little bit more square. So let's take a look. Da, da, da. This is what it's supposed to look like. Um, it's pretty close. There are some things that I see that they did a little differently. Um, mostly it's the yarn type. I'm using just um, pretty thin acrylic yarn. Well, it's not really thin, um, but it's, it's the scratchy kind of acrylic yarn, like a Red Heart Super Saver or something. Um, and it looks like this is maybe more of a, a thicker, softer yarn. But basically, it's pretty much the same as far as stitches go. So that was interesting and that was fun. And um, it gave me the opportunity to review how to do this, the, uh, the four half double crochet cluster stitch. I hadn't done that one in a very long time. So yeah, there we go. I'll have to try that again sometime. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial slash video slash experiment. I'm not really sure what to call it, um, but it was a lot of fun. And it, it's really neat to think that, you know, someone can, you know, make this pattern. They might not speak your language, um, but you'll know what they mean. This is like a universal language. It's kind of neat. Something that, that we certainly need at times like these. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and hey, maybe give this a try. There's plenty of, of uh, these charts out there. All right, have a great, great day. Bye-bye.